Full damage is an interesting feature to add to a game because when you think about it, a lot of times it isn't even necessary. It should be introduced purposefully. For example, in Mario Odyssey, each world is densely packed and the main gameplay consists of platforming and using your abilities to explore every nook and cranny of the world. The goal isn't to be encumbered by rules. Fall damage wouldn't really make sense. Even if you drop from a very high height, the only consequence is a quick shiver animation for Mario that just makes sense. Fall damage should be a reasonable consequence to dissuade the player from a specific action. In Tears of the Kingdom, for example, fall damage is included for several reasons. There's consistent realism falling high distances should hurt Link, but also it forces you to take things a little slower and maintains a better pace of gameplay. Instead, you should glide your way down, giving you an opportunity to find new things to be interested by, and it keeps things a little bit more slow and thoughtful. In something like Minecraft, fall damage forces you to solve problems like how to safely descend high heights, and it adds a sense of danger to more treacherous areas. It can be a great tool. So let's see if we can build a simple and easy fall damage system into Game Builder Garage. We have three steps here and we want our person character to take fall damage and in this case explode when he hits the floor if they jump from the highest step. So we're starting with our basic player character and camera. You can kind of set this up however you'd like. The first thing we're going to do is add a few sensors which are going to help us to create this fall damage system. One of the most important is going to be a touch sensor that will place below the player. And you'll want a connection point of Y positive, Y negative on the sensor so it's below the player. We'll also probably want to keep track of when there is nothing below the player. So we'll add a not node on for future use and connect the touch sensor directly into it. We'll also want a speed node on. What we want to do is get the speed of our character on the Y axis, which should be up and down. We want to check if they're traveling downward for a period of time. We'll get the speed sensor node on, attach it to a person, and then run it into a comparison node on set to greater than. We'll add the speed sensor to the bottom input and we'll add a value of negative 0.01 as the comparing variable. You can add in a number object into the world when you want to see the output of something, and we'll do it here to show why we need to actually compare to a negative 0.01. It's because whenever you're standing on an object that isn't the world, there's going to be a very tiny up and down frequent change in your player speed. And we want to make sure that the fall damage system doesn't accidentally explode your character out of nowhere. We'll take the output from that comparison and plug it into an and node on where the other input is the not touch sensor output. So we'll basically want to count up when our character is actively moving downward and there's nothing underneath them. We'll connect that into the input of a counter node on with a range of 0 to 90. Now you can change this range to be anything you want. 90 means that this whole timer will be complete in one and a half seconds since the game runs at 60 frames per second. And that's about the amount of time that I want the player to be airborne before they take fall damage. To reset that counter, we'll add a not node on to the comparison output. So whenever the character is not constantly going downward, we're resetting this counter. We'll add in a line marker display and spread it out over a small timeline. And then we'll add in a map node on so that our counter can interface with the marker node on. We'll make the input 0 to 90 or whatever the counter range is and the output 0 to 1 so that the line will cross through this marker as the player falls. Then we'll add in a bullseye node on, set it to rectangle and put it somewhere at the end of our timeline. We'll take the output of this bullseye node on, put it into an AND node on, where the other input is the touch sensor below the player. So if this marker node on has run its course to the end, and there is something underneath us, which means we finally hit the ground, then you want to apply your damage. That could be decreasing a health counter, but in this case we're just going to activate a destroy node on, which we've attached to the person. You want to make sure that it destroys person objects, and you also want to make sure that the person is destructible by destroy object nodons. Since we used a marker nodon with a line, we can add multiple bullseyes on that timeline so we don't just have a maximum fall damage, you can also do a step system with fall damage. Or you can have it set up with multiple bullseye nodon so that the player character loses more and more damage the longer they've been falling. You're going to have to play around with it and do some testing and adjusting on this timeline to make sure that you get everything set up perfectly. After about a minute or two, I was able to make it so that jumping from the second block does not kill the player character, but jumping from the third does. It's a pretty customizable system, and the basic version altogether comes in at about 14 nodon only. If you've ever used fall damage or decided not to in one of your games, let me know how that worked out.